talk about the stream types, the, way, uh, the concept of drainage patterns, the various types of drainage patterns and the concept of river capture. Now let's first start with what are the various stream types and how they are used under the drainage pattern systems. So stream types when we say if a river is moving along the slope or the direction of the slope, it would be known as a consequent river. A consequent stream or a consequent river. So if I have a river that is moving along, along the direction of the slope, it would be a consequent stream. The rivers which would be joining or which would be formed later as a result of headward erosion and which will join this stream along the weaker axis or I should say kind of perpendicular to the main stream would be the subsequent streams. The streams which would be running parallel to the main streams but would be minor tributaries or minor streams as compared to the consequent streams would be the resequent streams and these will join into the subsequent streams. So these will be the resequent streams. There can be some streams which run opposite to the main stream. So rather than running in this direction, they run opposite okay, or away from the main stream. These would be the kind of obsequent streams. And finally you have the insequent streams which are immaterial to the direction of slope and they do not have a fixed pattern on which they would be traveling. So these are the four, uh, the five types of streams that we have talked about. A brief recap again. So consequent streams are those streams which run towards, uh, which run in the towards the direction of the slope. Subsequent streams are a result of later headward erosions, and they try to join the main consequent stream along the weaker sections. It's usually at a perpendicular axis of 90 degrees. So you have subsequent streams which are joining. So if this is a consequent stream, this would be the subsequent stream. The streams that would be joining parallel to the consequent stream would be known as the resequent stream. The streams which are running in opposite direction would be known as the obsequent streams and those streams which do not have a well-defined pattern would be known as the insequent streams. Now we have already talked about these streams. Now how these streams define the process of river capture? Now try to understand this in a very simple term that if you have a stream that is running here and you have another stream that is going this way, there can be a condition when this stream tries to meet this stream which is very obvious. So what would happen is this stream when this will meet this stream this stream will try to capture the other stream and try to include this stream or the main water of this stream into the main stream. So what would happen is this might go in this fashion and there can be a kind of break which might demarcate this stream as a separate stream. So what is happening is this stream becomes, becomes the capture stream or the stream which captures the other river and this stream is left behind as a separate stream. So this is the process of river capture. Now we will understand more in this diagram. So here you have, in the first diagram as you can see on the top, you have two rivers that are flowing through. So the first river here is the main stream as you can see. So this is the main stream that is going through and draining here. This is the another stream that is going this way. So what is happening is, this is a stream which will capture the section of this stream. So this stream which is capturing the other stream becomes the capital stream. So this will try to capture this portion of the water that is coming into this stream. So what happens lately here is, this river flows in this manner 
and there is a kind of gap that establishes here and the remaining section of the river tries to flow into the similar part. Okay. So this would be the other river that would be flowing here. Now this river since it is trying to capture the other rivers it would be increasing in size as a result the drainage basin of this river or the capital river you have the drainage basin would increase okay this river would become the main stream the point where it would be capturing the other stream is known as the elbow of capture so elbow of, elbow of capture is the point where the capital stream tries to catch out maximum section of the other streams and since this is the point where this stream and this stream would kind of bifurcate this region or this section is known as the wind gap. So this section would be a section which would be devoid of any streams and such a section is known as a wind gap. Now the remaining river which has already lost some of its main tributaries here would be known as the misfit stream or a misfit river. It is also known as the beheaded stream. So this stream which is left behind is known as misfit river or beheaded stream. So this is the process of river capture. Now usually we see river capture occurs through the consequent stream. So I can say this is a kind of consequent stream that is run. This is a subsequent stream that is going here. It tries to uh, contact the consequent stream at the point where it is contacted. It will try to train, take most of the drainage away from that stream and create a new path or a new stream. So this process is known as the process of river capture. We can understand this process only after we know the basics of what is the various river types that we have talked about. Now let's talk about what are the drainage patterns and why do we need to understand the drainage pattern. So any drainage pattern that we talk about talks about the main river, its tributaries that are merging into the main river. So there can be various patterns and various types of drainage methods that are seen here. So the first is there can be drainage patterns that are independent of structure that means the physiology, the physiography of the region does not affect the pattern of the stream. So the two common examples under structures that are independent, uh, the drainage patterns that are independent of the structure are parallel drainage pattern and dendritic drainage patterns. We will be talking about all these in detail. So then in the next is dependent structure, those which are dependent on the structure. So those include the radial, paralyzed and the rectangular drainage patterns and finally you have some drainage patterns that are totally unrelated to the structure. Those are known as the antecedent drainage system or the superimposed drainage system. Now let's discuss each of these drainage systems one by one. These are kind of some of these you can see directly from the name itself. So the first one is a parallel drainage system. As you can see in the diagram here, you have streams that are running parallel. So these are the four streams that are running parallel and this is a kind of parallel drainage system usually found in terraces which have a uniform slope. Common example is the Aberdeen Mountains in Kenya. The next is the dendritic, the dendritic drainage pattern. As the word dendritic means This drainage pattern is a kind of tree shape or a tree pattern. So as you can see you have the main river that flows and then you have numerous tributaries that are joining into the main river. So this is a kind of pattern which appears to be a tree shaped pattern and this is known as the dendritic structure or a dendritic pattern. The next is the radial drainage. Now radial drainage is something that is dependent or very dependent on the structure. Usually common in volcanic mountain areas. 
So as you can see, you have a volcanic mountain region here. So what is happening is, from the top of the mountain, there are numerous rivers that are coming down. So you have the top of the mountain here, and you have streams that are going out in various directions. Okay. So this is known as the radiant drainage pattern. The next is, a common example of radial drainage pattern is Mount Etna and most of the volcanic mountains. The next is, the terrorized drainage pattern. Now the word terrorized as we see means, you have ridges, alternate ridges of hard and soft rock. So you have alternate hard rock, then soft rock, then hard rock and soft rock. So all those which are depicted with this design are the hard rocks and the remaining sections are the soft rock through which you can see the streams passing back. So this is the stream that is coming through. Okay. So this is stream is the main stream. You have the subsequent stream that is joining in and numerous resequent streams that join this subsequent stream. So this is a pattern of a terrorized drainage pattern. The next is rectangular drainage pattern. Again similar to the realized drainage pattern. The only thing here is the river that moves in is arranged in somewhat rectangular fashion. So you have a set of rocks here. So it follows the fault lines along the rocks and this would be the pattern of the river uh, in a kind of very systematic and rectangular fashion. This is something which is inverse of the radial drainage. The radial drainage we talked about uh, various kind of rivers originating from the top of the mountain. Here what happens is kind of many rivers pour into a depression. So you have numerous rivers that are falling into or getting into a common region. This is known as the centripetal drainage. As for the name itself, it's clear. It's kind of centripetal. So everything is, uh, all the rivers are coming towards the center or the common depression. This is a kind of deranged pattern. As in the Kana, as in the case of river types, we talked about insequent rivers which do not follow a systematic path. Such insequent rivers usually give way to deranged patterns. This deranged pattern is also known as contorted pattern. That means that all the rivers are following different directions, different paths. There is no systematic manner in which we can say a particular river is flowing in a drainage basin. So as you can see here, this river is going up, this river is draining here. So all rivers are following different paths and different drainage areas. So the complete drainage basin of this river, uh, of these rivers cannot be defined into a very systematic manner. This is a kind of artificial drainage pattern, a less commonly heard term. Now what is an artificial drainage pattern? Artificial drainage pattern is a pattern that is arranged artificially. So you have either a catchment area, a dam that is being built up or any catchment site that tries to control water. So you have a river coming here and you have artificially created a lake, a reservoir or any catchment area. So this is what we could classify as artificial catchment area. The next is annular drainage pattern. Under annular drainage patterns, you have concentric rings. So everything here you see is in a kind of circular form or concentric manner. So you have circles, outer and inner circles and these are related to one another. So this is stream draining here and this is stream draining here. Kind of beautiful patterns of rivers that are formed known as annular drainage pattern. Now these were some of the patterns that we can kind of talked about are related, are dependent or independent of the structure. Now we would be talking about some of the two fundamental drainage patterns that are totally unrelated to the structure. The first one is the antecedent drainage system and the next one is the superimposed drainage system. So this is a kind of antecedent drainage pattern. Now what is an antecedent drainage pattern? 
Antecedent drainage pattern, you have a main stream or a main river that used to flow during a specific path or a specific way. What happened over the years was, there was faults and faults deposition and uh, developments that took place and you had mountain formations that took place. So this is a kind of river that existed before the geological formations took place. So what is important to understand here is a basic example of what we can say. This is an Indian subcontinent. You have the Himalayan right here. So Himalayan originated as a result of the accumulation over the Tethys Sea. So this is the Tethys Sea that used to flow billions of years back and gradual uh, deposition from both Angara Dam and Gurdwana Dam uh, led to deposition in this region. So this is what is known as the Tethys Sea and it is a kind of antecedent drainage pattern. So the river originated there prior to the changes in the landform and this river in the present day it forms the Brahmaputra. The next is the superimposed drainage pattern. As you can see superimposed drainage pattern you have no relation to the surface topography or the surface rocks. So you have the river that is flowing here. These are the faults as you can see here, you have the anticline and the synclines here, which we will be talking about in, under the chapter on folds and faults. Now, over the years, there were gradual landform changes and you had folds that occurred in certain places. But what happened was, the river that is flowing here, is flowing here. So it's independent. If there is a fold, it might cross over the fold the other stream might cross within the fold. So what is happening is, it is totally independent of the structure or the bedrock. So the river originated there or river was there before. Over the years, there were changes in the landforms that took place but the river did not change its path because of the changes in the landform and such drainage system is known as superimposed drainage system. With this we cover most of the topics on fluvial geomorphology. We will be covering remaining topics under geomorphology and climatology in the further classes. You can subscribe to Exam Based channel for updates on geography. Have a good day.